ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kimber Bell's February Digital Dealer Exclusive Design. This is the Trapunto Pineapple Zipper Pouch. And um, let's go over what you're going to need for this. If you get the kit, what you're going to get in the kit is you will get a pouch. And they did the sample with the mustard color pouch, which is going to be this one here. Um, but they also have one in this beautiful velveteen navy blue and this really cute mint. And I'm actually going to do it in this mint. But your kit will be kitted out for this unless you request otherwise and I can accommodate. You're also going to get two pieces of foam. So you're going to get the foam and then you're going to get two pieces of cutaway stabilizer. Now you want the heavier cutaway stabilizer, not regular... Um, no show mess stabilizer. In addition to this, you could use some wonder clips or pins. I'm going to be using pins for part of this and we'll see if we'll use the wonder clips. This is the thread I'm going to be using, which I think is going to be really, really cute with this. I'm going to use a variegated, and this is Mirage thread. You need a water soluble marking tool and a ruler. I'm going to be using this 12 inch ruler, that should be big enough. Printed out instructions. Your eyes aren't crazy. That's just the way my printer printed. Um, tape, pre-wound bobbin, an array of cutting tools. Your design on a USB. And I always have my spray adhesive because I love this. This is KK100 uh, made by Ganold. We're going to be finishing this up on the sewing machine. So you're going to need... Um, well, I'm going to use my walking foot. You don't necessarily have to use a walking foot, but I have my regular zigzag sole and I have an open toe, just depending on what I feel like using. I am going to be using an 8012 Microtex needle, and I'm going to use this because I do like embroidering with this, but then I can go straight to my sewing too. So I'm going to be using an 8012 needle. It's already loaded into my machine. Um, if you want to hand sew it shut, you need a sewing needle. I'm just going to sew it shut on my machine because nobody's going to be looking at that seam that I'm going to use to close the hole. You need some kind of um, uh, turning tool so you can poke out your corners. These are my two favorite. This is the OESD point and press, and this is the Clover uh, point to point. So I always have both of those on hand. And you do need a pair of scissors to trim up your project. And as far as a hoop goes, we are gonna be using a um, six by 10. Let me grab it. We're gonna be using a six by 10 embroidery hoop. Or if you don't have a 6x10 embroidery hoop, you can use an 8x12. If you're going to be doing a smaller pouch, because there's two different sizes, there is the large and then there is the small. If you're going to use the small pouch, you can use your 5x7 hoop. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our pouch for embroidery. So if you go ahead and you turn to page five in your instructions. Um, it's gonna tell you that this is completed in three steps. First step is preparing and marking the zipper pouch, which is what we're gonna do right now. Step two is embroidering both sides of the zipper pouch. And step three is finishing the zipper pouch. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna place the pouch right side up with zipper pull at the top. So I'm gonna put my instructions here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And we want to go ahead and open this up with uh, the pouch right side up. So right side is going to be your velveteen side. And you want to have your zipper pull at the very top. So we're going to put our zipper pull up here. And this should be the right side up. Next step, it says, is from center of the zipper teeth, measure one inch on each side of the top of the zipper pouch. So your zipper pull is on the top. We're gonna measure one inch over on each side and we're gonna mark it with a pin put in vertically. So let's go ahead and get some pins. I love this pin holder. This is made by Clover. And I'm gonna use my flower head pins. And we are gonna measure an inch on either side from the, uh, we're measuring from 
um, center of zipper teeth. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this uh, with my three inch mark right on the center of my zipper teeth. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that. See if I can get that light to not shine right on there. And I'm going to go an inch over. So this is one inch over here. And I'm just going to go through the velveteen and then an inch over on the other side. And my black line is directly in the center of my zipper. And I'm going to go an inch over from here. And I'm just going through, like I said, the top layer of my velveteen. Don't go through both layers. Just like that and just like that. And that's going to look at just like your picture. So we are done with step one. Step two says, and here, important, velveteen fabric only. Step two says, repeat direction step one for the bottom of the zipper pouch. So we're going to do the same thing on the bottom of the zipper pouch. I'm going to move this up. And now we're going to go, I'm going to place this down here. So my line, and you could choose any line. I just did that so I could measure over. The line, my three inch line is directly down the middle of those zipper teeth and I'm gonna go over one inch. I'm gonna make sure I'm not going through both layers, just the velveteen. Whoops, whoops a daisy. Go right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go one inch this way. So I'm at my four. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to pull back on the lining and make sure that's not getting pinned. And I'm just going to go straight down. All right, um, next step. So that was step two. We did it on the top and we did it on the bottom. We're on the right side. Next step, step three says flip pouch right side down, roll both lining pieces together towards the center. So now we're gonna flip our pouch right side down. So we're gonna have, and it says wrong side of zipper pouch. And now we're gonna roll our lining into the center. So let's go ahead, let me put this out just like that. We're gonna roll our lining into the center. We're gonna roll this side too. Oh, look at that. I caught it just the tiniest bit up here. Make sure that lining's not caught. And we're gonna roll this side. I had to shut the door because um, Patrick's up there talking to the kids. Okay, we're going to roll this into the center. And then you're going to pin the rolled fabric to itself um, to hold the roll. So now we're going to go. So I rolled the right and the left side in. You can just grab a pin and just pin all those layers. And then we'll go ahead and we'll pin all these layers. Just like that, does not have to be perfect. You just want it out of the way. So I put a pin through here and a pin through here. That is this step. So we had the wrong side up and we just took both sides of the lining and rolled them in and pinned them all together. Step four, using a water soluble pen and ruler, draw a vertical line, so that's up and down this way, a vertical line connecting the pins on one side of the zipper and label it A. So this line over here, and let's make sure our zipper pull is, our zipper pull is still at the top. So make sure your zipper pull is still at the top. You wanna see it up here. Make sure it's not at the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna draw a line with our water soluble pen. Um, here's my mark be gone, so I'm gonna mark it with this one. And we're going to do one line right over here. And then we're going to do a line on the other side. 
So using a water soluble pen, draw, draw a vertical line connecting the pins on the side and we're gonna label it A and then we'll label it B and then we're gonna remove the pins from the velveteen. So I'm gonna put one here and one here and I'm connecting, let me see. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and connect my pins. If your pin's not totally straight, I'm going just from the top part of the pin and I'm just gonna draw a vertical line like that. And I'm gonna remove my pins. And we're gonna call this one A. Okay, now we're gonna do that on the other side. So it says to go ahead and repeat on the other side and label line B. So now I'm gonna do it over here. I'm gonna look over here on the side too. And it looks like it's just about six and a half inches over. I have a six and a half inch ruler. I'm gonna take out these pins and we are gonna call this line B. <laughs> Sorry about that. The culprit has been um, ejected from the room. Okay, so that's gonna be B. So we have A and B. That is step four, so we're done with that. Now step five says fold pouch in half widthwise, right sides together and finger press well. So you still want the wrong side facing you. And we're gonna fold it in half through the zipper. So we're gonna go like this, fold it in half and we are gonna finger press. So we're just gonna do this. And you know, these pouches are never perfect. So just pick the best line you can and they want you to finger press. Anytime it says finger press, I fingernail press. I know it's aggressive, but that's how I like it. All right, so we fingernail press that. This is what it should look like right here. Wrong side of zipper pouch. Now it says unfold the pouch and lay right side up. Looks like the zipper pull is still on the top, so we're gonna unfold this. I'm gonna flip it so that my zipper pull is on the top and you can see the line I just pressed. And it says, using a water-soluble pen and ruler, trace along the crease line to mark the center of the pouch and be sure center line goes across both sides of the pouch. So we need to go all the way through that. So now I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna put a center line. I'm gonna lay this down with my water soluble pen. And we wanna go all the way through that zipper. Let's pull it taut. We're gonna pull it taut. And let's go from here to here. And we are gonna use that all the way across. And let's get that crease right there too. And that's how you should be marked. Let's go ahead and look at our instructions. Um, trace along the crease, we did that. Be sure center line goes across both sides of the pouch. And we did that, we did all the way across. And this is how it looks. And it looks just like the picture. Let's go ahead and turn to our next page. Go ahead and hoop your heavy cutaway stabilizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this over by the machine. And I'm gonna grab a piece of stabilizer and my six by 10 hoop. Now the stabilizer you're getting, not everyone has a six by 10 hoop. If you don't, you should get one. Kimberbell uses them all the time. But what's cut for you should fit into your eight by 12 hoop too. Make sure that your arrows are pointing up. Make sure that it's it looks like this and not completely flat on the back. That's the wrong side. And we're gonna go ahead and hoop that stabilizer. I'm gonna just pull this in. And I'm gonna tighten this. And my hoop tightener, 
my hoop tightener is at the store because I used it in a class today. I'm just tightening it by hand just for this. And we are ready to go. Let's go on over to the machine and we're going to load our design. All right, so I'm going to go in here. I have my USB loaded uh, with my design on it. And I am going to go in here. I am on a Brother Luminaire. Um, and I am looking for Trapunto Pineapple Pouch. And be careful when selecting your design. Make sure you select the right size. There's a 5 by 7 and a 6 by 10. I'm going to select the 6 by 10 and set it. And it says here to load the desired embroidery file into the machine. Stitch the pineapple foam placement line. So I'm just going to put this thread in for the whole thing. You don't have to. You could choose a different color, but I'm just going to put this in. This is Mirage Thread. And... um. You know, it is actually a 30 weight, so you've got to at least use that 80-12 needle. You can go up to a 90-14. So I'm going to go ahead and thread her up. And let me go ahead and slide on my hoop. And it is going to do a placement line. I have to hit embroidery on my machine. And now it's ready to stitch that placement line. So I'm gonna grab my piece of foam. Here it is right here. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray to the back. never want to spray at your machine. I actually have a spray box here that I've been using for like eight years now and I'm going to give my thing a little shot of spray right there. Any like pizza box or anything like that would make would be a good option. And don't get crazy with your spray. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. And you just want to cover over your entire stitch line. If you want to bring it forward so you can see it a little better, you can do that. And that looks good. And you know what? It's only going to be doing your pineapples. So let me go ahead and lay that down. And I'm going to slide this back on. And you know, actually, let me go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and just let it stitch. If you are not spraying, then you want to use some tape and you want to tape it down. But I'm just, I sprayed it down and it's going to hold it there in place. This is going to be two minutes of stitching. It's going to stitch down all those pineapples. And then you're going to get your applique scissors and you are going to trim the foam close to each stitch line. So I have a couple of pairs of scissors here to see what's going to work best. I have my six inch double curved scissors and then I have my snips and then I have my uh, four, I think these are my 4.5 inch double curved, uh, double curved scissors and we'll see which one does the best job. You just want to have an array of tools by you. Look how gorgeous that looks. That is just the prettiest thread ever. And I just put it in now because I didn't feel like changing it later. That's what I'm going to use for my uh, quilting stitches. This is where I start to get really impatient. I start trimming while it's still stitching, but I want to set a good example for you, so I'm going to wait. It looks like there's 13 different pineapples.
The total stitch time on this is only nine minutes, but you know, it's gonna take longer with the trimming. And this is what's going to make your project look puffy. It's going to give that, give it the trapunto look. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this out just because I have a lot to trim around. And let's go ahead and aim it down. Here we go. And let's see what is going to work best first. So I'm going to go ahead and try these first. And you want to make sure you cut near the stitch, but don't cut that stitch. I'm gonna put this on my lap. And I'm pretty good with cutting with my left and my right hand. And if you're not, you're just going to be moving it around more than me. If you need to trim it a little more later, you can do that.
Just get into your happy place. You can practice mindfulness. Daydream. I'm just thinking, oh, I've got to do this another time for the other side. <laughs> but that's okay. Put on a good podcast. Turn on the TV. Just enjoy yourself. It's going to be worth it when we finish. And it has these cute, adorable, little puffy pineapples. And I can't wait to see mine. I was thinking about doing it on the mustard with um, like a royal blue thread. I thought that would be really gorgeous. And then I'm also thinking, wow, there's so much foam left. I could just use this and maybe it would be easier to just lay down small pieces for the next one. And then it wouldn't be in one big piece. It'd be easier to fold back. Or if you want to make your foam go further. And these are by no means perfect in the way I trimmed them, but they're going to get covered over. So I think it's still going to be adorable and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to stress about it being perfect. Not like if it was going to be seen, this is going to be underneath your velvet pouch. And there we go. So we are all trimmed. Let's look at our instructions. Um, we just did this step, or I'm sorry, we just did this, trim foam close to each stitch line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch the pouch, pouch placement line with the center notch. So let's go ahead and put this back on the machine. And if you look at your machine, it says that it's step three of your stitching. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. And it's going to stitch all the way up, do a center notch, and then continue up. So there is our center notch. And our thread broke. Let me go ahead and re-thread. And instead of just doing that, I'm going to, I'm going to switch out to a 9014 needle. This is a little small. I was trying to get away with um, just using this needle, but I really should go a little bit bigger. This is a 30 weight thread. I'm going to put this to the side. I'll use that for my piecing. So remember, when you change out your needles or you change out your foot, you want to hand tighten and then tighten with a screwdriver just a little bit more. Don't over tighten. Just a little bit more. What you don't want is you don't want that needle shaking out in the middle of your embroidery. It's always scary. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back. Let me go back. So we're gonna have to move our, I'm gonna come over here. So in our instructions, it says, you wanna go ahead and move and pin lining roll two inches away from the zipper on one side of the pouch. So we're gonna turn this, we want the wrong side up. You want A to be down here, and we're gonna take this and we are gonna roll it two inches over here on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my pins on the top and the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna unroll this about two inches and we're gonna roll this over here. And the reason we're doing that is because we are gonna be stitching on this side. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my pins back in. And I know that's not perfectly two inches, but we're gonna be okay. Okay, here's a little note. I always like reading these. Um, when repeating part two, to stitch design on the other side of the pouch, line B will be used to center the project. Move lining over zipper and two inches away from the zipper. So when we do the other side, we're gonna roll this over to the side with the A on it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now what we're gonna do is it says, a line drawn center line on pouch with the center notch. Align line A on pouch with the pou pouch placement line and be sure lining roll is to the left of the hoop and tape into place. So we are gonna be stitching this on the pretty side. So you want the right side to be facing up. So let's go ahead and go over here and we'll look at those instructions one more time before we totally line, put it down. So we're back over here. We want our right side to be up. And then our lining roll. So if you look at the picture, they kind of show it like this. And um, the zipper is right here. This right here is your line A. So line A is going to come down this way. And your center line, this center line right here is gonna get lined up with the center. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pull this back right here. Let me go ahead and pinch this on the center. I think you can kind of see the crease. Here you can. Okay, here's our center line that center line is gonna get lined up right here. And then our line A, there's our line A, is going to get lined up with this, whoops, this placement line, the one over here on the left. That is your placement line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this like this. And as I lay it down, I'm just gonna make sure this, my, um, dissolve away line is gonna be lined up right with that leftmost line. And that looks good. And that looks good. I'm just peeking underneath and making sure that's lining up with this line right here. And then once I get it down, I'm going to tape it. And I'm gonna tape it because I didn't spray it. Grab my tape. I didn't want it to be all sticky on my hands as I laid it down. And I can check under here again and I can see that that blue line is lined up with my placement line. I'm just going to put a piece of tape down here just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to do the same on the top. 
I'm really going to just... Bend this back and make sure my line A is lined up with this line here. That looks good. Let me flatten it out, smooth it out. There's a pin right there. I'm going to lay this out some more. I'm going to stand so I can see. There's line A. I'm just peeking under here, and that looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Make sure everything's nice and flat. Okay, let's get this underneath the foot. Watch out for any pins. Don't want to stab yourself. I'll put another piece of tape on the top and the bottom. So this center mark is going to get lined up with the notch and then the line A, which is underneath, you're going to be lining that up with the leftmost placement line for the pouch. And we should be good to go. I put another piece of tape here, here, and here. And we are ready to stitch. So now what it says to do, be sure lining is to the left of the hoop. Let's go ahead and peek under here. There is my lining to the left of the hoop. So we're good. You just don't want to make, you want to make sure it doesn't um, roll back the other way. You're going to stitch the pouch tack down line, and then we're going to remove the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Now we can go ahead and take out the tape and then we're going to stitch the Trapento pineapple design. Pull this towards me. We'll get the pieces from the top. We're going to put this back on and it's going to stitch the Trapento pineapple design. And that's going to be five minutes of stitching. Let's go ahead and hit start. It's a little bit puffy. I mean, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use a piece of, um, use a piece of, uh, Aqua mesh or keepy gone or some kind of topper. You feel like your stitches are disappearing. Uh, this is so cute. I just love it. You know, and I think what what makes it is that thread. The thread is just adorable. Oh my goodness. I love it. And just let it stitch. Once it's done from here, we're going to remove remove it from the hoop. We'll cut away the excess stabilizer. And then we're going to repeat part two, which is going to be a repeat of this just on the other side.
how cute is that? It'd be really cute if they had some other designs. Like, wouldn't this be adorable with like, I don't know, Easter eggs or hearts? Something spooky for Halloween? This is so unbelievably cute. I know the colors aren't really pineapple-y, but how adorable is that? Okay, so what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna bring my camera over here because we are going to take this off the machine. We're gonna do this a second time. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to pop this out of the hoop that's step 12, remove project from the hoop. You are gonna cut away excess stabilizer close to the outer stitch line. So let me grab my scissors and we're gonna cut it close to this line. I'm gonna use my double curved scissors, the big ones. We're gonna use these, just so I don't accidentally cut my fabric too. And you're just gonna cut close to the outer line We'll cut over here. Make sure you don't cut that fabric underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is all gonna get covered over by the lining. And you're going to be trimming close to here. This does extend a little bit over. You're going to see if you look at 
the picture, the design goes really close to the zipper and then you're gonna have some excess on the other side where it doesn't stitch. So don't worry about that. And when you look at it from this side, that is how absolutely gorgeous it is going to look. So um, let's go ahead. That was this step right here. Now we're gonna repeat on the other side of the zipper pouch. So let's take this. We're gonna swing this over to this side. So I'm gonna un pin this. Now we're going to be working with line B. I'm just going to put this over on the other side and pin it down so it's out of the way. You could wonder clip it too. You know what? I'm going to wonder clip it because I did stab myself once. So let's just clip it down. I don't have to worry about those pins. If there's pins, I'm going to end up stabbing myself. That's why I like to wonder clip if I can. Okay, we are going to hoop our stabilizer. So let's grab our hoop again. I'm putting in my cutaway. I'm gonna go ahead and push this down in there, pull inward to get rid of any of those creases and bubbles, and I'm gonna take this over to the machine. So I am on the machine right now. I'm gonna come back over here, and we are just gonna go ahead and repeat our steps. So um, we're right back at the beginning. First thing it wants to do is the placement line for the, uh, for the um, for the foam, I'm going to skip that step. I'm just going to go to the next step, and this is going to be uh, the tack down for the um, uh, the tack down for the little pineapples. I'm going to give my foam a little bit of spray. I left my foam at the store, so I had to piece two pieces here in my stash. So this is what mine looks like, and it'll be fine. But I'm going to give it a little shot of spray to the back, and I'm just going to center it right to the middle of my hoop, and that should be fine. And if you want, I could also, let me go back to the very beginning. Um, this goes forward, this goes back, I'm at zero stitches. I could go ahead and turn on my projector and I can see how far over it's gonna be on my right hand side. And then I could lay this down. So I wanna get it all the way to the top right. So that's where mine is gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this so it covers that. Cause I wanna get as much of my fluffy foam placed as possible. If you haven't used your camera or your projector, let me just check those sides and that looks really good. Let me go all the way to the bottom and I am good to go. I might be able to pull that over even a little bit more. This is what you do when you're fudging it. There we go. And I'm good to go. Okay, I'm gonna say okay. I'm going to go to my next step and I'm gonna stitch down those pineapples. So we're gonna stitch these down and then we're gonna trim. This is going to be two minutes of stitching and then get your scissors ready to trim them up. Oh, he was close to the edge.
there's a little fray there. I'm just going to clear that. And that just happens sometimes. Don't worry about it. Just listen to your mama ears. I had to go back a couple of stitches. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three more. to see if I could fit it all in this skinny little piece. Looks like we did. This one might be a little questionable. That was close to the edge. So what I'm gonna do is, let me go ahead and just cut him out. And cut, just cut him. There, he's out. I'm just gonna put a piece covering that so we don't have to worry about it. You won't have to do this. This is what happens when you leave, uh, you leave your stuff by the front door and you say, Patrick, don't forget this. And then he gets home and you go, do you have my stuff? Okay. So I hit my tens, now I'm gonna hit my ones so I can get it to go right where I want it to start. Going by ones, I'm waiting for it to bounce over to that one. Perfect, and now I'm ready to just add this. There we go. I'm gonna have to be careful right here because I don't want it to go underneath. There we go. All right, get your applique scissors and we're gonna trim them up. I'm gonna take this off again and I'm gonna put it on my lap and go ahead and start trimming. We were almost wide enough. And let's get comfy.
And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's still going to be super cute and puffy, but you don't want it to be horribly trimmed. Get close. All right, we are done with that. Now we're going to go ahead and do the placement stitch for the pouch. And remember, this time we're going to be laying down um, our line B. So I just go, went ahead and just hit start. It's going to stitch the line that goes up, the notch that goes in, and the rest of the way up. Get our pouch ready. Okay, we're going to go ahead and lay this down. Um, the first one I didn't spray. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one a little bit. I just like spray more than I like the tape. And I also drew my center line on the wrong side because I went back and looked at my instructions and it's supposed to be on the wrong side, not the right side. Not a big deal because this is a dissolve away pen. So I'm going to take this over to my uh, spray box. That's gonna make it a little easier to lay down. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna match up this line right here, the inside line, with that notch. That should be about right. And then as I lay it down with my spray adhesive on there, it should stay. Another reason I love spray adhesive. Now I'm just matching this. I am just matching that blue line, which is line B. I'm just go ahead and laying it down. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the top and lay that down. Now that I don't have wonder clips, I don't, I mean, I have the wonder clips instead of the pins. I don't have to worry about stabbing myself. And it looks like this moved. Hang on. Let me move my camera out of the way so I can get in here. But I go ahead and lay this down like this. And I am going to... Slowly, surely, lay this down. Let me peek underneath. I'm just peeking underneath, lining up that line B. I'm gonna give this a little, another little shot of spray, just so it'll stick. There we go. I'm just matching up that line, line B, with the line underneath. Let's make sure it matches up right there. Just keep in mind spray adhesive, anything gummy can cause your thread to break because it's going down through that adhesive and back up again. 
So if your thread breaks, uh, this is a good time for that anti-glue needle. I do not have a 9014 anti-glue, so I am just going to work with what I have and just be understanding of, I'm just going to lay this down and peek up at the top and hope that it is even. It's getting caught under there. Let's peek under here and see, and that is lined up. Yep, so we are good. Tuck this under. Tuck this down. And I peek under here one more time. That is lined up pretty perfectly, and we are ready to go. So kind of a messy job just getting it down. So it is going to do the tack down. And I'm just going to kind of tickle my fabric in front of it so nothing gets turned under or pushed around. And now it's going to do the cute little stitching for the watermelon. And I'm just going to listen for my thread because it is going through all that spray adhesive. Once we're done with this, then we're going to get ready to stitch it all together.
I'm just going to check that thread. Let's make sure it's all looking okay. And it is. And I'm not sure what happened there. So let me just go back a couple of stitches. I'm going to trim that away. Let me go ahead and trim that. And to get back stitches, you're going to go into this button right here. I'm going to go minus 10. And now I'm just going to be watching here. And I'm going to go back to where this is stitched. Make sure that it is not going to come apart. Oops, can't even see that, can you? Just going by ones. Okay, that didn't take me there. Let me see. You can also watch right here on the screen. Let me go ahead and uh, that's where we need to go. Okay, I'm just going to let it stitch right over that. We're so close. I would hate for that stitching. There we go. We just went over it, and that's fine. And sometimes when you use specialty thread, they're a little bit more finicky. And we're done with that stitching. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to take it out of the hoop and we are going to trim it up just like we did the other side. So I'm going to pop that out. And I feel like this is absolutely to die for cute. We're gonna go ahead and trim away the fabric right around that stitch. Make sure you don't cut the fabric underneath. If it feels like it's thick, don't squeeze your scissors. That means you've got fabric in there too. Okay, your instructions now will say I'm just gonna keep trimming this up, but we are going to be moving on here. So we're doing this right now, trimming the stabilizer, and we repeated this. It says, after we do this, you're gonna remove all pins. For me, it's the Wonder Clips, and you're gonna open your zipper three quarters of the way. We're going to open up our zipper, remove all pins. So for us, I'm going to remove these two wonder clips. We are going to open up our zipper. Here's our zipper three quarters of the way. So right there to there. And then it says align both sides of the zipper pouch velveteen right sides together. So we're going to turn that over. We want to align both sides of the zipper pouch velveteen. These are our right sides, right sides together. Match up the corners of the stitched box and pin in place. So here we're gonna go ahead and put our pins in there. You're gonna ma match up the box. For me, I nicked that thread, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna match it up here, right here, and then I'm gonna match it up right there. I'm gonna check. Those both match up. That's the box. And we're gonna go pin. And good thing we're not pinning based on the edge because that edge is not matching up. And then we're gonna go ahead and pin it in place. 
and you can look from this side and make sure that line is matched up. I'm going to check it here too. And match that up. And match that up. And then we're going to match this up. And that's matched up. And that looks really good. And then let me get ahead and match this again. And then this side is that is matched up too. That is really good. And we're just doing the velveteen. Okay? My little box in that. Now we're going to match up this too. Just the velveteen. You want to match up the little corners. back a little bit that's perfect that is good that is good we are matched I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin right here okay so we are matched up I had to put a pin in here too just to make sure because I did accidentally nick that note to self do not nick your outline stitch so now that we've gone ahead and we have matched up our corners and pinned it in place, if desired, use thumbtacks. I'm not going to use thumbtacks. Unfold and align front and back of lining fabric right sides together and pin into place. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our, our um, lining fabric right sides. Your right sides are going to be the insides. The wrong side is going to be the side that faces the wrong side of your velveteen, and the right sides are going to be facing each other. So if you have your velveteen together and you go ahead and take your lining pieces and put them together, you're going to have your right sides together. That's the right side. Um, the wrong side is facing the wrong side. Or not facing, but adjacent to. Okay. Um, and right sides together, and they want you to pin it into place. So we're going to go ahead and take these two and pin these in place. And I'll just get a pin right here. And we'll grab another pin and put a pin down here. And now your instructions say... Using a ruler, extend the pouch tack down lines from the velveteen across the width of the lining fabric. So we're going to take this, we're going to take our ruler, so we are going to extend this. So this is our stitch line here. You can't see it because it's in white. It's my bobbin thread in white. But I'm going to line my ruler up with that stitch line. And they want you to just extend it onto your lining fabric. Let me put this up so you can see it. So here's my stitch line that you can't see because it's in white. I'm going to line that up. And they want you to extend that line. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And then we want to do the other side too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that. There's my line. I cut right up against it. I'm going to line this up with the bottom of my pouch too so it's like a right angle. And they want you to just extend that line. So there's my line right there. After you've done that, then it wants you, so I've extended my line, measure six and a half inches from the center notch stitched in part two. There's my center notch right there. We're gonna measure six and a half inches across and mark this point with a water soluble pen. Here's my center notch. Do you see it right here? Yeah, they want you to measure six and a half inches over from that. So here's six and a half. Six and a half is right there. So I'm going to put that right on that and measure six and a half inches over from that. Whoops, that's not six and a half, that was seven. 
there and we're gonna measure six and a half. Measure six and a half. Mark this point with a water soluble pen. We did that with a ruler, draw a vertical line through the mark perpendicular to the extended marks. So I'm going to go ahead and make this perpendicular to my purple. There is my notch mark, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw down. Okay. Then it wants you to. Fold and align top end of zipper teeth. So zipper, fold and align top end of zipper tape. So zipper teeth are together and facing towards the velveteen. So, okay, let's, so we just read that. Let's go ahead and do it. So fold and align top end of zipper tape. Here's the, here's the top end. This is where the zipper pull was and I undid it. Fold and align top end of zipper tape so zipper teeth are together and facing towards the velveteen. My velveteen is that way. My teeth are facing that way. So I need to go ahead and switch that over. I'm going to go ahead and turn this the other direction. So there are my zipper teeth. We want to fold those and align it and we're going to place it going the other direction. So this has to go this way. Zipper teeth are facing the velveteen. Um, and facing, and then we're going to pin that in place and we're going to repeat it for the bottom end of the zipper tape. So if you peek under here, those zipper teeth should be aligned and they should be facing the velveteen. We're going to flip it over this way. And I'm going to pull this nice and taut here. I'm going to fold this over and pull it nice and taut the other way. Zipper teeth facing the velveteen. Pull this taut. Line up your zipper teeth so that's all together. And we are going to pin that in place. Let me get a pin. I am going to pin this. I do not want this to move. I am going to go ahead and pull this this way. So there's my zipper teeth that way, velveteen. Okay, we're going to do it with the bottom side too. So here are my zipper teeth. They need to be facing the velveteen and then we'll fold the other end. I know that seems, it feels a little awkward, but that is what you want. I'm going to put this through here. Okay, we've got that. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew the perimeter of the zipper pouch along the drawn lines, uh, leaving a three inch opening for turning it inside out. And the three inch opening is going to be over here on this side. We're going to sew on this side. We're going to sew on the um, stitch line. And then we're going to sew on the drawn line. And then this, I just want to make sure that this is going to stay the way we need it. Just like that. And let's go ahead and sew. I'll meet you at the machine. Okay, so I switched it over to sewing. I'm just going to do a right center, uh, um, a center stitch. I'm going to just sew it at 2.5, which is the default. I put on my walking foot, and I'm just going to use my regular zigzag sole to kind of hold everything together. So hold it down. So let me go ahead and put that on. And then we are going to go ahead and we are going to sew this together. All right, so let's sew on the side where you can see the drawn line. And we want about a three inch opening right here. So I'm gonna start right here. And you wanna back stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch that. I'm gonna take this out. Oh, you know what? I'm like, why isn't this sewing well? I'm not plugged in. Let me go ahead and plug that in. Your dual feed does not work if it's not plugged in in the back. 
much better. I have my auto pivot turned on right here, that auto lift. That way when I get to the very corner, it'll automatically lift and then I can turn and and if you want to sew the lining the tiniest bit smaller remember the zipper needs to the zipper teeth need to be folded it needs to be going towards the velveteen so this should be folded back like this and if we have to pull this out we might have to pull that out I'm gonna pull this out because the, just the way it, it's in there, but I'm gonna make sure this is all folded back and the teeth are facing the velveteen, which they, which they are. It's gonna be a little thick right here. Okay, I'm gonna sew a little bit to the inside of that stitch And if you need to pull out that basting stitch, you can. Okay. Pull that out. Okay, make sure those teeth, and I can feel them, are pointing towards the velveteen. I'm gonna pull this out right here. Flip this up, so both of these. And it's thick here. So, if I have to assist it, I'm going to just the tiniest bit up and over. You might have to flick it underneath the butt of that walking foot. Pull that pin out. We wanna leave about a three inch opening. Double back stitch. And we are good. We're gonna go ahead after we've sewn all of that um, we're gonna check our stitching. Just make sure that the stitching looks good right here and here. Um, be sure to back stitch, which we did. Remove all pins, flip pouch over. Check stitching to make the stitches are inside the drawn line and the previous tack down line. If necessary, unpick and fix. Uh, we're gonna trim pouch the excess uh, zipper end a quarter inch from the seam allowance. So we're gonna trim around this a quarter of an inch the whole way. We strongly recommend trimming edges with pinking shears or sewing a zigzag stitch. Uh, if you have a serger, I would just take to the serger and do a quarter inch all the way around it. Um, except right here, you don't wanna serge this shut, but you, I would go ahead and serge from here on three sides. This side, that side, and the other side. And then you're gonna trim your corners to reduce the bulk. So let's go ahead and check all our stitches to make sure we're inside of that stitch line. And it looks like we're not inside of this one. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not gonna unpick it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew it from this side too. And just make sure, cause then it'll be truly inside that stitch line. I'm gonna back stitch right there. zippers are going towards it. They're going towards the velveteen. I'm just going to ease it up and over this. It's always nice having a machine that's got some power. And then everything else looks good, so I'm just going to go ahead and back stitch it. And let's go ahead and cut. 
Everything else looks like it's right inside that stitch, so I think I'm good everywhere else. And, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and just take it to my serger and serge this edge, and I'll bring it back over so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I went ahead and took it to my serger and I serged this edge and this edge and I serged this edge. So we are serged and ready to go. And I am going to go ahead and just trim this edge to a quarter of an inch with my scissors. I'm not even going to reduce the bulk in, um, I'm not going to reduce the bulk. I'm just going to trim that. Like that. And then I'm going to trim this. And just cut it across. And then let's go ahead and turn that right side out. This part, of course, is going to be really, really easy. And this part is going to be more difficult because it's bulky with all of that, um, that uh, cutaway, the heavy cutaway to stabilizer. So just do your best. I'm going to turn a little bit of this at a time. If I have to take some of that stitching out, I think I left it, um, mine was probably more like two and a half inches. Oh, that's cute. Be patient. Don't be too forceful. Seems like it's turning pretty easily. And there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and poke these out. I'll pull that lining back out again. Um, I'm going to pull that back out towards me, but I'm going to turn it all right side out first, and then I'll pull it out and we'll just stitch it up. And that looks absolutely adorable. These threads, I think these threads were just, just there from the construction of it. So, and then you want to use a little bit of water. This is um, a water-soluble pen, and this mark actually should have been on the inside of the bag. Um, and then we can go ahead and we can stitch it up. So I'm just going to take it like this. Nobody's going to be looking at the inside of my bag. And usually when I have bags like this, I just kind of pinch it this way. And I am just going to go ahead and just stitch it right here shut. I'm just going to leave the thread that I have in there and stitch right on the edge. And these, let's pull these corners out. Before I stitch it up, I'm just going to reach my finger in here and push out these corners. And let me grab my turning tool. Although tempting to use the little itty bitty ball on your turning tool, my advice to you is to use the big one. I've just pushed through the corner one too many time. 
And then we'll go ahead and push this one too. And I just kind of bounce it a little bit. That's as much as I'm gonna do. And if you wanna put in a matching thread right now for this, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna pull one side and the other side and I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch it right on the edge. Let me see, there we go. Nobody is gonna be looking, I can guarantee you. I can stitch right on the edge. Back stitch just a little bit. And that is finished on the inside. Nobody is gonna peek at that and I'm just gonna tuck it right in. And tuck in my corners. And if you want, sometimes people will make the lining just a little bit smaller. And it's really important that you put that zipper towards the velveteen side so that it's gonna close. And we are done. And isn't that absolutely adorable? It almost looks, because of my colors, it almost looks like Easter eggs um, instead of those pineapples, but it is super, super cute. I'm going to go ahead and do one in the velveteen with the little pouch. And um, thank you for joining me.